Ah, uh, is there anything better than a nice, cheap B650 mover board? Except for the fact that clearly someone didn't get the memo, because Gigabyte have just released the B650 E Aorus Master, a B650 Extreme mover board that goes for $450. For that price, it's actually more expensive than the entry-level Aorus X670 with a board. Though thankfully it's still rather far away from the price that you'll be paying for the X670e Aorus Master. So what gives? Why is the board so expensive despite being quote unquote the budget option? Well, it is a bit complicated, but there is a method to this madness. And starting off with CPU power, we already see exactly why this motherboard board costs so much. Seeing how it has a 16 plus 2 plus 2 power phase configuration rated at a whopping 105 amps. That is absolutely insane and it decimates pretty much all other B650 and B650 E boards and even X670 motherboards. That power delivery is actually on par with what you will find in the full-fledged X670 E version of this board. Combine it with the two full 8 pins for CPU power and your brand new Ryzen 7000 processor is going to be getting a lot of juice. And when it comes to PC expansion, here it also blows its competition out of the water. Because seeing how this is an extreme variant, that means that the main PCIe 6 and X slot is actually rated at Gen 5, which means that if you buy a Gen 5 graphics card, well, you'll be able to take full advantage of it with this motherboard. Well, as long as, you know, PC Gen 5 graphics cards actually start to come out, because right now, well, there isn't any. And once again, Gigabyte continue their neglect of the poor old 1X slot, which is still not present anywhere on this motherboard. Which, again, I know that you can just use 1X slot cards in 16X slots, but we can all agree it looks much, much better if you put a 1X card in a 1X slot. Add to that space for four M.2 NVMe SSDs, with one of them being Gen 5 ready, and you have some pretty insane PC expansion in this motherboard. So you can probably see how it justifies its price, even though the fact it's a B650 motherboard can, at first, kind of throw you off. And the story doesn't end there, because the rear I.O. is, as you can expect, pretty amazing. Starting off with, as usual, USB Type-A, I mean, Gigabyte really do not disappoint. 12. 12! 12 is the magic number here, and that's how many USB Type-A ports there are. The same as on most other budget Gigabyte offerings this generation. Naturally, no other competitor even comes close. And in fact, this mobile board even beats out its X670E counterpart. So, uh, weird oversight, but okay. And speaking of oversights, this mobile board only has HDMI for integrated graphics and not DisplayPort. Even though the more budget version of this motherboard, the B650 Elite, does have both HDMI and DisplayPort. Okay, so let me wrap my head around this. Entry-level X670 motherboards, which are the more expensive variants, don't have integrated DisplayPort. The more budget B650 entry-level motherboards do have both HDMI and DisplayPort. Then high-end B650e motherboards don't have integrated DisplayPort, but high-end X670e motherboards do. Gigabyte, get your story straight, man. Why on earth are you so picky about where you put your display port and where you don't? I don't get it. Were your engineers drunk or halfway through the project were they drafted into the Taiwanese army or something? Anyway, apart from that, the rest of the rear I.O. is pretty fine. With an additional 10 gigabit USB Type-C, Wi-Fi 6E, 2.5 gig Ethernet, and sadly, once again, Gigabyte's poor attitude towards audio options, seeing how you only have a mic in, line out, and optical spit if, and that's it. I have no idea what caused the divorce between Gigabyte and the tried and tested 5 audio jacks and optical spit if arrangement, but but I'm just kind of tired of complaining about it. Just kidding, I will always complain about it. But at the end of the day, it'll probably leave you with one big question. What's the point of this motherboard? And that's a pretty good question, and the answer is pretty simple, even if Gigabyte don't make it simple. And that is that it occupies its very own segment, which isn't very apparent at first. At $450, even though it's a B650 Extreme motherboard, it's actually a mid-range Aorus offering. Seeing how this time around, Gigabyte do not have any X670 motherboards above Elite. They have no Ultra SKU this time around, and the Pro SKU, which was supposed to come, is nowhere to be seen right now. So this is actually the middleman between the X670 Aorus Elite and the X670 E Aorus Master. But that's not the end of it. Not only does it actually have pretty decent feature parity with the much more expensive X670 E Aorus Master, but one thing that you might overlook that is so important is the fact that this motherboard is ATX. 
while the XX70 E Master is EATX. And that is the crucial difference here, because if you want those high-end features, but you can only fit an ATX motherboard in your case, then this is the motherboard to go for. And even compared to other manufacturers, not just Gigabyte's own models, this thing is still amazing. Gigabyte provides some of the best CPU power delivery, and of course they spoil you with the amount of USB Type A at the back of the motherboard. But their bad habits are still present in this motherboard. The lackluster audio options and the lack of dedicated PC 1X slots is still very disappointing, not to mention that it also only has four SATA connectors, while most mobile boards nowadays have six. But if you can forgive those mistakes, it's still a very good board. And if you want to buy it yourself, then the Amazon links to it are going to be down in the video description below. And if you're rich enough to afford this mobile board, you're also probably rich enough to support this channel on Patreon, which is also going to be down in the video description below. As even just one single dollar burn truly goes a long way, well, you get awesome perks as well. I'd also like to thank my existing patrons, Gavin Burns, Ryan, LKB, Justin Rage, Elif Ronyak, Bardosh Valka, Meg Sumner, Shane Allcroft, Lansby, and Jesse Herbman. Thank you guys so, so much, which truly goes a long way. Dan is going to find our merch store, our Discord server, and our social media links as well. But anyway, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in whatever I make next. Goodbye, everyone. Good. Bye.